I was always the choice bit of calico because I never feared being the fiery streak at a party, unlike the rest of the blue noses. No Hollywood I'd ever wanted to cash in on a cancelled stamp standing homely in the corner. Any opportunity of the gold ticket to the silver screen was something I was willing to go for. I always knew how to ascend the west coast ladder, what I would have to do to my body to achieve the Ritz. I stepped over hundreds of dewdroppers and slackers all my life as they made way. Seeing it all play out now in my mind like a flicker of a projector, time seemed such a variable thing. Our existences come and go in the blink of an eye, but also last a lifetime. An eternity can be everlasting, but it can also last only a second. Countless nights spent spificated in some upstage estate, laying closed-hearted and open-gammed after making Whoopi, just for the chance to make another connection, to land a starlet gig. Each passing infinite second, I understood that my career could be made. But it never comforted my ever-cold nights alone. I began to find more comfort in coffin varnish than to any dandy. Being blotto and all my time was far more comfortable than living on the weekends. When you're alone, it's really an uncomplicated thing to put rights to some dope. Centuries passed when Victorian Roman tribunes or generals would return from the capital with spoils of their victory They would be celebrated with a grand parade. Once such a general rode through the gates of Rome. In his train were all the amounts of wealth and spoils, slaves, and this legion marching behind his chariot. Upon reaching the steps of the Senate, he turned to the crowds and mobs and declared his immortality before all the gods. From this day, it became custom and practice for a slave to ride with a returning general. For the entire parade, the slave would whisper to him, Remember, you are only a man, and all men are mortal. Memento mori.